So, any <coughs> words here to clarify some ambiguities here? So, so a domain can be uh, said to be a special kind of region. Uh, okay, I just informed that, that um, November 8th is not a university holiday. Okay, it actually is 11 15th. And so we will have a makeup class. Um, actually, it's 11 15. Again, a Wednesday, okay? about uh, two weeks later. Okay. All right. Um, there is a simple theorem um, for this section. It's called a fundamental um, theorem. of the position is only valid for homogeneous medium PD. So if U1 and U2 are solutions okay, of a homogeneous So it's very important we have homogeneous and linear in some region. Ah, okay. Then, so we have two solutions, U1 and U2, for the same homogeneous linear PD in some region R. Then, uh, with any constant, say C1 and C2. The linear combination U of, of U1 and U2 with coefficient C1 and C2 uh, is also a solution of that PDE in the region. Oh. I think that is very simple because uh, if, you, if you write down, um, uh, for example, write down the um, generic homogeneous uh, linear PD of signal order with two variables, uh, you will immediately have this one because uh, because every time this is linear and homogeneous, so when you add up together, um, you, will, you will know that uh, this linear combination is still a solution. Okay. Um, so I, I just skip the proof and I'd like to show um, a couple of um, examples of the. So, um, Okay. Um, if we want to solve uh, this partial differential equation, okay. oh yeah, you actually is a function of two variables, one, right? Um, like. OB uh, and OB. Okay. Um, okay, so um, because the this partial dimension equation involves only partly relative to x, so x, right? So um,
right? So, so I think there is no partial derivative. With respect to what? Right? So we may regard u as a function of x, right? So by fixing by fixing the value for y as a parameter. Okay, um, so um, we know a general solution of the OD you come from when it's equal to zero, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's U A E X plus B e minus X. So u, so, so we fix y as prime and regard u as a function of x. So, so now we have a, a second order order of the equation. Okay, and you, when you this because this is a linear uh, ODU with constant coefficient, so and the homogeneous. So you know the characteristic um, uh, polynomial is just. A, um, lambda square minus one, so you have uh, one and minus one, right? So, so this is the uh, general solution. Okay. And if this is indeed an uh, uh, order differential equation, of course that uh, a and b are constants. But, but here uh, we, we just regard uh, u, okay, as a function of x, but by fixing one. So. So the, the, the coefficient a and b uh, may depend on a uh, constant okay, for each fixed value of y. Okay. So, so that in our situation, A and B okay, may be dependent on Y. So that So that um, we have uh, um, A actually is a function of Y and the B actually is a function of Y too. And then the solution U X Y should be A Y equal to X power plus B Y equal to minus power. Uh, so this one uh, is a general solution. Of the PD. And here, A, Y, and the B, Y are arbitrary. Then the arbitrary function. You can you can substitute um, going the origin to verify directly that this solution um, mm -hmm. satisfy um, the PD here. Okay, this is the PD here. Okay. So this is a, a, a special, very special type of uh, partial differential equations. Because we can solve it uh, 
uh, by the techniques of uh, OPD. Another example, like the same flavor, is that uh, we solve uh, UXY plus UX, okay? Like If we let P to be the first positive result of one uh, of U versus to X. Okay, so in that then we have uh, P1 plus P equals zero. Okay. Hear that? And again we will regard P as a function of Y by fixing X as parameters. Okay, so so that um, so we have P equal to Y. Okay? Because we have experience how to solve uh, first order ODE, right? So P is C times Y. Where C is a function, C may depend on X. Okay? Right? So that P X Y and C X E minus Y. Okay? But but um, but P is just a positive vector of that. So you have UX equal to C X prime. So now if you take the okay. so you integrate this vector X you get uh, u plus constant, right? And uh, so, so the constant, uh, say uh, b, okay. so the b uh, is y, because you integrate over x, so that the constant depends on y in general. Okay, so u of x y. The general solution is that it's A of X, E plus E of Y. Okay. This is the most general solution. And here, A, X, and uh, E, Y are arbitrary. They are arbitrary. And so Okay, so so this so for example give you a lesson that if you want to use the OBE to solve PD problems, when you you have to deal with the constant carefully. Because in all the Constant, just constant. <laughs> but in, to apply the techniques of OD to solve the PD, because we usually fix some of the variable so that we can have uh, um, the OD to solve. Okay? And, and then when you fix uh, some variables, then the, the constant will depend, in general, depend on that variable. Fixed. So for, for example, in the first example here, uh, we get uh, the OD because we fix Y as parameter. 
So once you get, you stop the OD, the corresponding OD, and you have constant A and B, then A and B should be a, in general a function of one. Okay, and so you have that. For the second example, you have this OD, right? Uh, you got this OD by fixing X. Okay, and so the constant we have here should be a, a function, right? Depends on X, the value X. And now, when you integrate a partial derivative, you know, the indefinite integral, when you do the integration, you have a constant. Okay, but when you do the integration, you fix y, right? So the constant should be a function. Okay, and then, so the, the integration here, you get f x, and x is zero. So that is the, um, the cases. Once you once you grab the idea, then, then you are very happy to uh, use the technique of uh, solving order integral to solve uh, uh, some special type of uh, uh, PDEs. Okay, and so now um, we are now solving some non-trivial PDE. A section is about modeling a vibrating string. Uh, by modeling a vibrating string, we will have a, a web equation. And so, because uh, 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 we, we are very tight of time, so, uh, so it's a surprise. Textbook, okay. I will not demonstrate how to get a web equation. So, um, so I will jump to the section of how to solve. So, um, by separating variable. So the, the main purpose uh, is to introduce the method of separating variable. Okay, so now I just, I just summarized uh, the second section in a sentence and, the, and uh, help you to look at the detail in the textbook, okay? So uh, let me see. So actually, uh, we are dealing with a perfectly uh, elastic, elastic uh, string. Okay. So we have a perfectly elastic string. Um, Additional physical um, condition need to be uh, imposed. Right. 
in the previous section. Okay, so we have And um, where u uh, equal to u uh, x, x, the vertical compression So we have a um, situation like here. Zero. Oh. All right. So we have a string putting on the x-axis from x equal to zero to x equal to L. And uh, the string May, may, right? So, um, so the new, so this is the um, this quantity is u and t. Right? So this is the vertical diffraction. Right? So you have vertical diffraction here. So at the at the the, the point x and the time t. Right? So you have that time t. Um, and say t is zero here. And properly you have uh, U x and time one. Okay, so at different time, you have a uh, uh, different uh, diffraction from the resting position here. So this is the resting position. Okay. Right. And, and so so this is called uh, and so the, for a string to vibrate, okay, to vibrate, and and um, and we face them. Uh, the string at the two end points, so they will no, we will not have any vertical diffraction at both end points. This is the physical constraint, the so-called boundary condition we will have. Okay, we will have that. Okay. And uh, and when you look at uh, the detail of the modeling, uh, you will see that we end up with uh, such a. Uh, uh, partial differential equation. So the diffraction, all right, this, the second uh, di uh, partial derivative of the diffraction you, with respect to tan parameters will be equal to the c squared times the second partial derivative of u with respect to the x, okay, the, the spatial domain here. And c actually, C is the speed. So C has the parameter, has the dimension C, um, uh, the speed. This dimension um, meter per second. So C actually is the speed. Right? So this is the uh, uh, equations we want to solve. Okay. So the so the motion, so the motion here u is just the vertical diffraction of uh, of uh, of uh, string mass. Okay. 
at uh, x and uh, at uh, ten. At position or the zone of position x, right? At the horizontal position x and the uh, chan t. So, so this is the horizontal position. And the string x uh, model as a perfect elastic. Uh, uh, matter so that um, um, if, if there is no resistance force, um, that would be bracket. So only the tension, only the tension of the string uh, will um, cause the, the vibration of the string. Okay. So this is the, uh, the equation we want to solve. Right? And since the string okay, is present at uh, the two n x equals zero and uh, x equals L, we have two boundary conditions. Right. So, so this, this uh, uh, is called 2.3.1. This is the equation, the web equation. So it's called uh, what I mentioned now. So equation. Okay. Because it involves only one spatial variable. Of course, you have time because this is wave, right? So you have time parameters, okay, and and, and only one spatial uh, uh, variable x. Yeah. So it is called one-dimensional wave equation. And uh, now, so the one-dimensional wave equation that uh, uh, we have equal to zero and uh, L t zero for all t. So we start at time zero, and uh, and, uh, and uh, when the time evolved, then the the diffraction at uh, the two endpoints here zero because we we fastened the string at both endpoints. So we must have these two uh, boundary conditions. Furthermore, okay. Uh, the ongoing uh, vibration of the string right, will depend on its initial condition, its initial diffraction. i.e. the diffraction as a So if we let the string uh, 
rest right, here, horizontally, then they will not have any vibration. Okay? If it, if it rests there, it will rest there forever. Okay? But if you have an initial diffraction, right, for example, you, you just, just pull, right, pull the string up and release the string, and the string will vibrate. Okay? And so, so that is us. Have two initial um, positions. U of x zero equal to f of x, and uh, the initial velocity times zero is two of x. So all x Okay. So now, with initial position and initial velocity, okay, and two boundary conditions, now then classical mechanics will give you a unique solution because that uh, you have all the conditions. So the motion of the string will be determined, okay, by the classical mechanics. All right. And so mathematically, we should be able to solve the solution uniquely. Okay. So now, so this is the work which we like to do. So now, uh, to find a solution of the PE in 12.3.1 and this one the boundary condition is called the uh, equation it's 12.3.2 uh, and this one is 12.3.3 okay so to find the solution of PE and uh, satisfying the boundary condition Okay, in, in cut point point two and uh, the initial condition in chip point three point three okay we uh, take three steps okay we take three steps Okay, so um, step one, separation variable. Okay, so we will try to find special kind of solutions. What kind of, what special kind of solution? Okay, uh, we will find uh, solutions uh, of okay, so we will find solutions of uh, um, of uh, the PE in twelve point three point one. Okay, so we will find solutions of the PE of the form U of uh, X P equal to f of x, f of x, and g of t. So that's why it's called separating variable. <laughs> because when we, we will try, this is the, the, the try, right? To find uh, solutions such that uh, uh, it's the product of two functions. One function depends only on x, the other one depends on t. Okay, so we just try to find such and special type of solution. Okay, so we will find. Okay, now. Now, um, so, um, now, things, okay, U, T, T, so, the quantity U, Q, 
Okay. We find that because this is independent of t, so that this becomes two. Okay. So this is f of x times the second derivative of g with respect to t. And uh, u x x, because we are we are going to solve this equation, right? So u f of x becomes two the second derivative of f relative to x and g t okay so it is very easy right but if we, we try such kind of solutions we have that okay and so so um, so now we have uh, f of x c square g t equal to c square times g t okay. so we have find substitution okay so we just substitute into the PDE So, so we get we get this one. Okay. All right. Now you know that. Uh, so so you have product here, right? Uh, you have a function depend on x, function depend on t, function depend on t, function on x, uh, and uh, by dividing. So now we can make a uh, so right. So divide on um, both sides by c square f of x g of t. Okay, so we have we have that uh, one over c squared g t g t g t squared equal to one over f of x um, okay so now at the the, the left hand side uh, we have a function involved only variable t but in the right hand side you have a function involved only variable x okay all right and so so you can see that you can see that um, this one must be what a constant a real constant okay because this one is a function of x this is a function of t right and what things that uh, it, it depends only on x as well as only on t. Well, the only possibility is that it's a constant. Okay. So where k is a constant. And what is and k is what we want to determine, right? So this is a constant. Right, and now, so now we have two ODEs. One is that uh, G the prime minus K C squared G equal to zero. The other is F the prime minus KF equal to zero. So we have 12.3.4 and 12.3.5. Okay? So now we have okay, 
So we, we can have, uh, we reduce the problem of solving a PDE to a problem of solving a pair of ODEs, of signal order. And they are correlated to each other. Do what? Do the constant K. Right? They have the same constant K here. Okay, so they are correlated to each other. And the reason why we can get such a pair of ODE is because we are trying to find a solution which is take of this spatial type of form. It's very, it's very important, right? We, but we are trying to. Okay, um, so, um, so step two. Okay. Um, solving all the uh, with boundary conditions in. Okay, so we, we have two boundary conditions. Right. Now, the boundary condition in R U of zero T U of T is F zero and G T zero and U L T equal to F L G T zero for so all T right, so this is our boundary condition. Now if G of T equal to zero for all T equal to zero. So if uh, G T is zero for all T equal to zero, then, then of course U X T equal to zero for all X T and T. So we get a trivial solution. We are not interested in trivial solution. Okay. All right. So, uh, which is trivial? Okay. So we assume that uh, G T not equal to zero for some T equal to zero. Then we must. Okay. Okay, so once we have a, a t, because this is true for all t greater than zero, so if for some t this is not zero, then then of course that uh, f of zero is zero and f of l is zero. So so which it's. Uh, which are boundary conditions of the OD in 2.3.4. Okay, so it is the boundary condition for this. Okay, for this one. Solutions. Alright, so now we have for a second order Alternative major equation with two boundary conditions. Then, as we know, this OD is linear, it's constant coefficient. Okay? And with two, so we, we will be able to find solution, unique solution, actually. Okay? So, um, and, but, but the solution depends on, you will see, depends on K. So to so we'll see that, um, so if k equal to zero, then a general solution of the ODE in 0.3.5 
um, it's equal to ax plus b. Okay. Right? So this is the general solution because when k equals to zero, then zero you can you can have the general solution here. Okay? Now um, so um, with the boundary conditions uh, in twelve point three point six with the boundary here. So we find that uh, f zero is b equal to zero, okay? So b must be zero. Fl comes to a l is zero. So it comes to a equals zero. Cool. Okay? And so that implies f of x is zero for all x in and implies as u x b is zero for all x. Okay, a trivial solution. But again, we are not interested in trivial solutions. So, also when k is zero, then we have uh, just um, trivial solutions. If k equals to mu square, which is greater than zero, then a general solution of the OD in 3.5 is that CE mu x plus EE minus mu x for x in mu L. Okay? And now, and now and again and again the boundary condition in 12.3.6 when we spell zero is equal to f zero so c uh, so zero zero c plus d is zero right zero equal to f l so you have e uh, mu l plus e e minus mu l okay and you solve when you solve them you find that uh, you have one one e mu l e minus mu l c e zero zero and because the determinant is non zero okay the matrix is non zero so so we implies that uh, c Okay. Again, right? So that uh, u is trivial. Okay. So when k is positive, you, you have no non trivial solution. So we are not interested in that. Okay. So now the only possibility is when k is negative. Okay? So uh, if k is equal to minus p square, less than zero, with p greater than zero, then, then a general solution of the ODE in uh, 3.5 is that um, f of x equal to a cosine px plus b sine px okay. and again find and again um, with the boundary condition in 12.3.6 uh, we have Okay, so zero is f, zero is a. This one, if you put zero here, this is zero. So a times cosine zero is a times one is a. So a must be zero. Okay, and uh, for fl, so for fl is that uh, 
This A is zero, so we have E sine P L is zero. Now, since B cannot be zero, because A already is zero, right? So B cannot be zero, otherwise you have a trivial solution. So since B cannot be zero, we must have that sine P L to be zero. So this is implied that P has special values. So this implies that P is uh, um, is m pi divided by l, okay, um, for all.